go. Um, I wanted to make a video showing um, how to graft eggplants onto a nematode resistant rootstock, um, which is especially valuable here in Central Florida where we have really bad nematodes. So the nematodes are basically what make growing eggplants really difficult. Um, otherwise, they do really well here. Um, so I uh, saw at a farm recently someone else grafting eggplants to a relative called Solanum torvum, which is kind of a tree-like, weedy, uh, solanaceous species uh, that's graft compatible with eggplant. So um, I came home and I did a number of grafts and I think actually all, all of them took, so it's, it's easy to do. And they should result in a long-lived, healthy eggplant, maybe even live for longer than a year because it has that healthy root system. Uh, so you can see here um, the graft union. So this is, uh, I actually don't remember the variety name, but this is kind of a large round eggplant. And then this is Ping Tong Long. And I did these grafts maybe a month ago. And that, that leaf there is from the, the, the root stock. Uh, so yeah, we'll go, I'll do a demonstration of how to graft them. So the first step is selecting your scion, which is the top piece of the eggplant. So this is gonna be coming from a healthy, fruiting size, mature eggplant, which in our case is in some good soil that doesn't have much nematodes. So this, these are ungrafted. Um, so the, yeah, so what we're looking for is a fairly strong uh, piece that preferably doesn't have fruit or flowers on it, but I, I suppose you could cut them off. Uh, so we're going to take this vigorous piece right here. So, uh, what I like about this particular piece is that it's, it's straight and it's nice and disease free and healthy. And it being nice and straight is going to make it very easy to make the cuts and line it up with the rootstock. I'll clip that away and then it's it's important to remove the majority of the um, foliage so especially these big leaves are going to come out completely and even these small leaves cut in half um, the the leaves at this point are just going to dry out the the material the plant material so by reducing down the the leaf content um, it helps helps keep the the scion healthy. I'm sure that uh, we could experiment further. You may actually be able to leave something like that, but uh, this is what I've been doing so far. And that looks like it's actually a flower bud. So I'm going to go ahead and pinch that off because we don't want the plant to be trying to produce flowers. And then that there is a tender growth, vegetative growth. And we want to keep that, but that particular uh, leaf I'm going to cut in half just to reduce some of that transpiration. Okay, so I have my scion wood of Ping Tong Long eggplant, which is a long purple eggplant. And then we have a rootstock, which is Solanum torvum. Uh, this, this is a weedy plant, so you can actually find it growing wild in some parts of Florida. So you might gather seeds and um, start them for rootstock. It is a weed, so you might not want to grow this out to produce seeds because uh, it can be kind of a problematic weed. And this is actually edible itself. Uh, there are other solanaceous plants that could maybe be a rootstock, but if they're poisonous, I'm not sure how much research is done on if poisons can migrate up through the rootstock into the fruit of the eggplant. So this is a safe one to start with. Um, so I don't have a lot of rootstock left, so I was a little limited with my choice, but I tried to match the size of the rootstock to the scion. This is the biggest piece I had, so I should have actually probably picked smaller scion wood. Uh, this scion has two main growing points, which is kind of like two chances for it to take off, because this bud here could grow, or this bud here could grow. And on all the last grafts I did, both of them actually grew. And then when I, I'm gonna do a cleft graft, so um, you can watch other videos about how to do the basics of a cleft graft, but this is a grafting knife, so it's beveled just on one side, which is helpful. And this is actually oval shaped, uh, meaning one side is, is thicker than the other. And I'm gonna cut so that my sliver is actually thin rather than 
So if I cut this way, it'll be fatter, and if I cut this way, it'll be thinner. And I'm going to do uh, the thinner part, that way it is more likely to line up with the uh, size of the rootstock diameter. All right, so I'm not the greatest grafter, but these have been very forgiving. So um, but I hold here, and you want about maybe a centimeter and a half or so of a V-shape. So I dig my knife in, and you're trying to make a nice straight V-shape. So that's pretty, pretty good. And then I'll start here, cut this side. If you can make one continuous cut, it's better. Um, so I, I messed that up a little bit, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay, that's pretty good. Got a little bump there to fix. A really good grafter does that in one shot and they don't have to come back and fix those little imperfections. So you can see a cleft shape. Show it again. And we're going to make a corresponding cut on the Solanum torvum. So what I'm aiming for is for the diameter here to be the same. And I've already kind of eyed this up. So I'm going to top this right here. And you want to you could actually take this and root it as a cutting, and then you could graft into that. So we may hang on to that. So then I'm gonna take my knife, or I'm gonna take my scion, and I'm gonna line this up. And you can see uh, a crossways, and a crossways with that, that makes a pretty good match, because the part we're trying to match is the outer um, cambium layer, which is right here. And I'm, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna cut this, this direction to the same length that I cut my my wedge. So I'll just dig that in, just like this. And I like to size this up while I'm still with the knife still in, so I need to go a little further. And you don't want to get dirt or anything on this while you're working with it. And really it would be better if I'd sterilized my knife, but That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go a little further. Okay, so then you can use your knife to to open that up. So then you wanna slide that in all the way till it hits the bottom. And unlike tree uh, wood, this stuff's really soft and prone to um, coming apart when you push on it. So you wanna be real careful. So that there is our cleft graft. And actually I did pretty good on both sides. It lined up, but if you, if you're, if it's not perfect on both sides, it's better to make it perfect on one side. Because if one side takes, then the whole thing will take. Where if neither side takes because they're both off, then nothing at all will take. So, so that's good. A good graft like this, you shouldn't be able to see any air through. So it's a nice, perfect seal. So then I'm gonna take a uh, parafilm. This is just like a laboratory parafilm. And I'm gonna cut. The stuff is stretchy, so it's you don't need a whole lot. And we're gonna wrap up the union. So this is gonna serve two functions. Uh, one is it's gonna seal that up because if water gets inside of that graft union, it will ruin the, the graft. Um, and two is I'm gonna try to wrap it kind of tightly and um, wrapping it tight will, will pull the union together. Um, so I start with a stretch and then you always start at the bottom and it will behave like roof shingles. Then you hold the graft, stretch the tape and make your way around. And uh, since the eggplant is softer wood than a tree, I'm kind of going a little easier on it than I might with a, a fruit tree. So that's pretty good, that's all you gotta do. Then the tail, I just uh, break off the extra, stretch it out, stretch out the extra and wind it up and then I just kinda wrap that tail around and it makes a little bit of a seal at the top. All right, so that's the graft. 
Now to, to heal the graft, we're gonna make a, a small humidity chamber with this bag, which this is just a produce bag from the grocery store, and these work really well. I think they're a little bit breathable, which um, maybe helps. And I'll use three small diameter bamboo sticks to keep the uh, bag from touching the, the graft, which could uh, cause it to, to rot or, or get baked in the sun. I'm gonna top these all to be roughly the same height. Then put the bag over. Um, so that's ready to go. Now, the important thing with this is not to put it in the sun. This needs to be in the shade for it, it takes one week or two weeks, something like that, to heal and start to grow, and it'll start to get bigger leaves. And as its leaves get bigger, you can take a knife and kind of cut into the bag, and maybe every day when you walk by it, open the cut up a little further, and that way you're slowly exposing the eggplant to the conditions of the outdoors, rather than being in this humidity chamber. So this would be an okay spot right here for this to harden off. We're under shade and then also being in the shade of these other plants right there. And uh, the bag helps contain the water that's in the pot. So you don't need to water much. Maybe once a week you can come back, lift this up and water it until it takes. Then eventually that'll come off. We'll have an eggplant and then it can go out and be planted. So I hope that was uh, helpful.